Hi again, Tony Zelinsic, tuba professor at Capital University, bringing you the next in our informational installments about the tuba. Before we get too much farther though, make sure that you click the like and subscribe buttons and turn on notifications so you know when these videos are coming out. Uh, it's getting to be that time of year when schools are getting to the end of the fiscal year and time to buy some new instruments. So if you have some money left over, you want to buy some tubas, I am going to show you some instruments that you might consider for your school program. Uh, we have four B-flat tubas today. You can see they're all different configurations. Uh, when you go to a music store to buy an instrument, the trumpets all tend to look alike. The flutes all tend to look alike because they're all the same shape and size. Uh, tubas do not because people are not the same size and this instrument is very physical to hold. So you have to take into consideration many things about the tuba, not the least of which is going to be how physically is my student going to be able to hold this instrument up. You'll see that we have two three-valve tubas. Three-valve is a standard brass configuration. Uh, we have one with the valves in front and one with the valves up top. Those are just two different concepts of valve placement. Um, the instrument only having three valves is a little bit easier to manipulate. You don't have to worry about learning four valve fingers for the younger student. Uh, and the instrument is just as flexible as the four valve instrument, but you have to understand how to set these things up. Far too often I see instruments, the slides don't move and the students are, are, are stuck because they can't play in tune the way they're supposed to. And then they have to end up changing their tone to play in tune and we really want to avoid that. So what these, uh, this, is, this instrument is the King 1135. This is a fantastic uh, three-quarter size uh, and that's another thing to talk about you'll see three-quarter four-quarter five-quarter and six-quarter tubas listed that is not a standard measurement at all every company has their own idea of what three four five and six quarter is so it just basically if you make it as simple as possible small to big so you have to kind of look at each instrument in that respect but this is a three-quarter tuba three valve valves up front the nice thing about this tuba is that you can set the third and first valve slides one and three as you know uh, on brass instruments is typically a very sharp fingering as is one, two, and three. Anytime we involve that third valve and more, more valves on a three valve instrument, these, these can be set and then also uh, adjusted from above while the student is playing. On the three valve uh, pistons up configuration, you'll notice that the slides are only set on the bottom uh, with a main tuning slide here. The thing that we have to remember is that we need to teach our students how to set these instruments up before they even start playing. Because it can be, it, again, it's very difficult for a young person to try to play in tune if the instrument is not set to the proper length. So just let me show you a little bit, uh, and I'll play these instruments for you a bit, and, and we'll talk about them some more. So this, as I said, you can adjust the third valve slide and the first valve slide at the bottom of the instrument. This main tuning slide, sorry, first valve slide is here. Main tuning slide comes right off the lead pipe. Um, uh, I usually set the third valve slide out about three quarters of an inch the first valve slide out about a half inch. That's totally arbitrary until you hear how your student's gonna play the horn. The nice thing is that you can get close at that point and then they can manipulate first valve slide and third valve slide on the top of the instrument as well while they're playing. sounds fantastic for that small. Quite a lot I also hear from, uh, from teachers and students alike that horn's not big enough. It won't make the sound that I'm looking for. Uh, they will make the sound that you're looking for. Uh, we just have to make sure that everything is set up the right way. You'll also notice that we have two four valve instruments here. Uh, the four valve instrument, of course, adds the fourth valve. The fourth valve on any instrument like this, uh, you'll hear many uh, uh, different ideas about it, but one of the ideas is not that it puts the instrument in F. You hear that quite often, that that's similar to the F attachment on the trombone. In actuality, the fourth valve is similar to the F attachment on the trombone, but all it really does is it lowers the pitch of the instrument, the lowest note you can play from a low E to a low C. That's really all it does. It adds a major third to the bottom side of the instrument. So again, uh, this is a King 2341. That's their, this is their flagship tuba. Uh, this one has a third valve slide, 
fourth valve slide on the bottom, main tuning slide, and first valve slide, all accessible at the bottom, so you can set the horn up ahead of time. And then on the fly, one, two, and three are accessible on the top. Now you see uh, inherent differences in the instrument. This instrument is really about the same height as this instrument, same company, same basic valve set, slightly larger bore size tubing in the valves here. But you notice that in a B-flat tuba or any tuba that you're looking for, the diameter and shape of the outer branches is where you get the sense of how big a sound is it gonna make, how broad a tone is it gonna have, how well is it gonna project. You'll notice that these outside branches get large very, very fast. So this is gonna have a much different tone quality than this one. So I'll play the same excerpt on this horn. So you can hear right away the differences between these two instruments. Uh, big broad sound here, smaller sound here, but still very, very, very good. This instrument could fit well in the hands of a younger person. So don't shy away from a four valve tuba in middle school if you can afford one. Uh, the other four valve instrument that we have here, this is a fantastic instrument. This is the Jupiter 1110. Uh, this is one of my favorite tubas uh, because it, it takes into consideration the, the build structure of the old German tubas, the tall smokestack bell and the tightly wrapped uh, tubing on the inside. So you get a good bit of resistance. Whenever the tubing is more tightly wrapped, you get more resistance to blow against and it becomes, a, for many people, a little easier to blow. Um, always remembering that when we're talking about tubas or any musical instrument, every instrument plays different for every person because it's not the instrument, it's the person playing the instrument that matters. But some instruments do things differently than others, so it's interesting to talk about. On this instrument, you'll notice uh, the thing, probably the coolest thing for me is the second valve slide that's right here. You can just reach it and pop it out, and it's easy to get back in. Of course, if you can find where all the stuff goes. Uh, it's easy to get at and easy to tune. You can actually tune this one on the fly. Most second valves you can't get at. Uh, first valve and third valve are accessible up at the top. Sorry, first and third. Uh, fourth valve is accessible down at the bottom. Let's hear what this one sounds like compared to the other two. So that's the Jupiter uh, 1110 B flat tuba. And this is probably a good time to talk about mouthpieces with young players as well. Um, I quite a lot see uh, very large Kahn Helleberg mouthpieces, which I just happen to have a copy of right here. Um, you can't get the, a very good look at that, but this is a very deep funnel shaped mouthpiece that is very wide cup diameter. When you talk about mouthpieces, there are several parts. And again, we, can, we will uh, link to all this stuff in, at the description at the bottom of the video. But the mouthpiece basically has the rim, the cup, the throat and the back bore. Uh, these parts all, all figure into how the instrument is, how the mouthpiece plays in the instrument. Um, this has a relatively sharp inside cup, which allows it to stick to the face a little better and tends to help with uh, articulation. The Helleberg style mouthpieces have a very, very sharp, what we call the bite of the inside cup and a very deep funnel shaped cup, much like a French horn mouthpiece. Uh, the theory behind this when it was invented was that the sound spirals into the mouthpiece very quickly and through the horn allowing for greater projection. You typically find these big mouthpieces on the big piston valve American horns, like this one. The more rounded cup, shallower cup, was typically used for smaller tubas, but it's, it's a, uh, uh, it tends to favor the fundamental of the instrument. So you tend to get a slightly darker sound. Now again, these things are only generalizations. Every player plays differently, so it's hard to tell. So what, we'll, what I'm gonna do now is I wanna play a couple of things for you on this upright three valve uh, B flat tuba with two different mouthpieces and kind of show you what the differences might be. So I'll play the same excerpt that I did before. 
This is a medium shallow uh, uh, rounded cup, cup shaped mouthpiece. <laughs> That was the rounded mouthpiece. Now we will try the funnel shaped mouthpiece. Let's see what this sounds like. You may have heard with the funnel shaped mouthpiece a little bit more brightness in the sound. Uh, again, the funnel shaped mouthpiece is meant to bring overtones out of the sound, whereas the, the other mouthpiece is meant to bring more fundamental out of the sound. The other thing too, I should not have put that horn down. I wanted to show you something kind of in closing about these instruments. Um, again, quite often I hear uh, band directors say that I can't get the right sound out of that instrument. Uh, for my students and I can tell you that these instruments will play with all that sound that you want uh, Something that you won't normally be heard on a, on a, on a tuba like this So even these little instruments can put forward a pretty big sound. So in closing, as you're shopping for new tubas for your students, first thing you can do is always contact your local tuba per, uh, specialist. You'll have somebody at a nearby university, at a nearby music store, your, uh, of course other colleagues that might have been tuba players when they were in school. Um, people are easy to reach these days, so reach out. Um, of, again, check your budget and see what, you're, what you can afford and do a simple, a simple search online will help you find a lot of instruments that are out there. But really go up to the professionals first and make sure that your students are getting the opportunity to play on a quality instrument. Uh, nothing will hinder the progress of a student more than a bad piece of equipment to play on. So I'm hoping that this helped you out a little bit, that you'll get a chance to try out some new tubas. Uh, I hope that uh, you have success with your students. Uh, as we uh, wind up here today, please make sure that you click down below. Uh, in the uh, description, we will have links to all these instrument manufacturers, all these companies, and mouthpieces. And uh, hopefully you will find some good information there. Uh, thank you for watching, and don't forget to click like and subscribe.